Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be replacing this uh, hard-coded Instagram with the user that actually uploaded the listing. So we're going to slap on, I guess, their email right there. Um, so we're going to go over how you can actually fetch that data for the, the listing. Now before we dig into that, there's one thing I wanted to fix real quick. And that is how we are storing the uh, image. So right now I'm storing it without its extension. So for example, like .png at the end or .jpg. And uh, this has a small side effect, which I want to fix, which if I copy this and I paste this into the URL, download this image, it doesn't really recognize it as an image. You can see like there's a little file there, um, and that's because it doesn't have the extension. So I'm going to go ahead and add the extension back onto this. Um, so like, for example, if I do .png at the end of this, and I now try to fetch .png at the end. You notice the browser will actually treat it like an image, and I can actually see it um, right here instead of it being just a regular random file. It doesn't know. So I want it, all my things to be treated like that. So I'm going to rename this back to what it originally is because I'm not storing it into my database as .png right now. So the way I'm going to do this is when we process the upload, it's very simple. There, oops, there's a field called mime type here. And now what I'm going to do is to generate the .png, .jpg. Uh, the mime type, what that is, is it's going to be like slash image, slash png, or it's going to be slash image, jpg. So it's the second half right here that we care about, and that's what the extension is going to be. So I'm going to pass that into our store upload, and I'm just going to pass this as the second parameter here. And I don't really care about the file name, so I'm not going to bother with that. So I'm not destructuring here. It's just going to have two parameters, the stream and the mime type, which is a string. And now I want to get this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, const extension is going to be mime type dot split I'm going to split on the slash and then I'm going to get the first thing in the array so when I split it we're going to get something like image JPEG and then what's going to be stored in extension is just going to be JPEG so now when I create this ID really what I want is the, um, the ID and then a dot and then the extension Extension. So now when I upload a picture, it should now uh, store the extension of it and it should treat it as a picture. So let's upload this guy again. Um, and I'm not logged in right now, so let's log in. And I'm just going to create another blank one. Get our Timo. I guess we'll put a name so we actually display something. And we'll come over here to listings. And I'm going to refresh. And we can see this guy at the bottom. If I come over here, I can now see uh, this image was uploaded. And it was uploaded with the .png. So you can actually see even Visual Studio Code will render it now. Um, whereas this one, it doesn't. So cool. So now we're storing it with the file type, um, which is a plus. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with displaying the uh, user here. So the first thing we have to do is actually change some stuff in our database, or not our database, but our um, backend, because uh, if we come over here to our listing type, we, we're actually not even allowing them to grab a user. So we're gonna add another field on here called the user, and this is going to return the user type and every listing has a user and must have a user. Um, you can't create a listing unless you're a user. And the user type is over here and it just has an ID and email for me. And so now I've added this type but I'm not fulfilling it. And what I mean by that is if I were to try to fetch this and I say, I guess I have to refresh. I say user and then I, did I not save it? Um, I have my server up and running, right? Yeah, it's not It's not liking, cannot find user on, I think I just need to refresh it again. 
ID email. Oh, you know what? I, I this happened to me the other time. The server does not automatically restart whenever I make changes to the schema. So you're gonna want to make sure to manually restart this. So now it should recognize this user. So now everything is gonna be a problem basically because I'm returning null for the user right now and the user cannot be null. So the way we're gonna do this is similar to how we are for the picture URL. So we have a custom resolver for this and we're gonna have a custom resolver for the user. So I'm gonna put a comma at the end here and we're gonna say user and uh, the name here matches the name here. So I called it user. Maybe a better word in this case is the owner because it's gonna be the owner of the listing. So we could call that owner. And if I call that owner, I need to call this owner over here. And uh, so now how this is gonna work is I'm going to fetch the owner of this particular listing. Now in the parent, that's all these stuff here. We actually have the ID of the listing, so we can look it up that way. So what we're gonna say is um, we basically need to find the the owner or the user. So if I come over here, um, I guess we do it right here. So when we find the listing, one of the properties on this, and maybe we'll just console.log the parent. This would be helpful to see. And then we're gonna return null. Um, and I don't think we need anything but the parent. But anyway, one of the properties on the parent um, is gonna be the user ID or the owner. I forget what we actually called it, our entity. We can see our listing over here. So I called it the user ID. So there's a field called user ID on it. So we're just gonna look up the user based on that user ID. But I can run this right here. Um, and oh, I guess it's, we can run it, oh. This also needs to be owner now. Um, maybe refresh, there we go. All right, so here's the listing. And we can see here's the user ID on that listing. So that's what we're gonna use. So if you wanted to, you could destructure it and grab that user ID. And now I'm gonna use the user entity here and just say find, find one and we're gonna say where the ID is equal to the user ID. Um, and that's it, so now we're gonna fetch that user. Uh, so we'll let this restart, and now we should be able to refetch this, and now it'll actually display the ID and the owner. So now instead of throwing an error, we're actually getting this data. So perfect, so now we just need to come over to our controller over here where we're actually specifying what data we're fetching and we're gonna say owner ID and uh, email and if you added any other fields you can add those as well so let's come over to that package and build it and now we have access to the ID and email and we can actually display this in our card so now where it says over here, and actually, uh, before I actually build this, I guess I already built it, I wanna run yarn refresh types. Reason for that is we actually have an extra, extra thing now. So the reason why I had to run refresh types, and if you don't have that, what refresh types is doing is it's generating the types and then it's just running npm run build reason why I have to do that is because we added the owner onto this. So now this, this listing here, this type that we pass uh, for, or for our listing now has a new field on it, which is owner. So if I didn't update the types, TypeScript would not know that I could actually um, do that. So that's important to refresh whenever you make changes to that as well. But now here we go, here's where we just hard code Instagram. So instead of hard coding Instagram, I can say L and so you notice how TypeScript knows there's now an owner? That's because I upgraded or refreshed the types. And I'm now gonna display the email. So if this refreshes and 
let's see if it crashed because it usually does. Nope, it's fine. Uh, and now it refreshed. We can see here's the email of that user. So perfect. So now we're fetching the user per card. And now in this case, I've only done this with a single user, um, but this would display the whoever whoever created it. It doesn't even have to be the user who's logged in. Now there's a downside to the way we currently did it, and I want to discuss real quickly. So what happens is we make a SQL request every single time we create a listing. So I fetch the user here, 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 here. So I make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I make seven SQL requests. Um, seven times I call user.find one. So if I come over here, we can actually see this. Here's the log for it. So you can see all these select statements right here. All of them are fetching the user. And the funny thing is we're fetching the exact same user. So I run the same SQL statement seven times because it's the same user. So this is incredibly inefficient. And so there are ways to combat this. And that's what we're going to go over in the next video. We're going to be using something called Data Loader. Um, this is my preferred way to use it. I used to use Join Monster, but I think I like Data Loader better because I think it works better with larger queries. Um, because what Join Monster does is it turns the query into a join. So it would join the listing and the owner. Uh, whereas Data Loader, it separates it into two queries. But what's going to happen is we're going to batch the owner or these queries here all up into one query. Uh, but in this case, it's just going to cache it, right? Because it's the same ID for that user seven times. So we only need to make one SQL request to find the user and then cache it for every single one. So be aware when you add stuff like this, watch out where you're adding SQL statements and make sure you add data loader, which we'll do in the next video whenever you do this.